I'm Gregory Sift. I'm a feel-good artist. I like to, to paint in order to feel good about things. And this is, this is my home. This is where I, where I paint. This is my studio. This is where I live. I really enjoy, you know, waking up, making a cup of coffee, eating a bowl of Rice Krispies, and looking at a painting and saying, does this look good today? I started out in New York and moved here to LA, and that's where we are today. A lot of art was getting noticed in, L in LA, and I had the opportunity to do a show on my own, and I wanted to you know, work as hard as I can and, and paint a show. It was always at the tail end of every show that I was pushing myself, like, we, don't, we only have this amount of time before the show, and you start doing things that you normally wouldn't do. And I like that, kind of like the ticking of the clock of like those moments at the end of the, when, you, when you're really squeezing the last paint out of the tube is where you, where you find something you wouldn't normally come across. And I had the opportunity to do a show for one night only at Siren Studios. It was called There and Back. And that was a sellout, it was a smash hit. Like I was confident with every piece that was hanging up on there. And Dina Brown, who has Gallery Brown, came to there and back and wanted to meet with me and see my pieces. And she carries works of art that move her. And I was very happy that she came to my show and said, come for a meeting. And we went to the meeting and I brought some pieces with me. And a woman walked in and bought one of the pieces off the ground that I was showing, you know? I said, I want to have a show that like exists for more than one night. Because I had shows at the Standard Hotel, shows that I made myself, group shows where there's so much artwork around that you can't get your voice through. And I was like, this is going to be my time to do this. And like time, literally. So on the tail end of there and back, I was out here on this patio. And I invited all my friends and all people, strangers, and everybody was all in this place. And one of my friends, friends was on the patio with me, and he said, you did it, man. You sold out the show. Everybody showed up. The work looked great. But remember, you're nothing. All of this, it means nothing. You got to stay hungry. You got to remember that. And I was like, I sat out there, and I was smoking a cigarette, and there was a clock on the wall. And I took the clock off the wall when he said this, put it on the ground, and I just stepped right on the clock, took my cigarette out, put it out on the clock, and I said, that's nothing. And everybody was like, what just happened? And it was just beautiful. It was this image of the clock with these cigarettes in it. And that was kind of like my next exploration for this show. It was just like the time that we have and what we use for it. All these different moments, all these different experiences that I've gone through and that I've seen, and also the whole goal of life with the trophies that they say you should earn, um, and also the trophies that you really treasure. You know, like everyone has a different, different playlist on their iPad, you know? Everyone has different taste, but when something's real, it can translate through anything. And Matter of Time is an invitation to like, an encyclopedia of what happened <laughs> to me. I mean, I was working with themes with like life and death, like I did these canvases, life and death, and I wanted to put all the good stuff, everything I love about everything into a piece. And there's a piece in the show called Death of a Hustle, which, because I was like, trophies are the death of a hustle. Like you put these things around, you get like, ah, oh, I had this great show. Like I, sometimes I even find myself like, yeah, it was a sold out show, everyone was there. and like. You know, like you start encapsulating and freezing these moments and you carry these things all around you and it just makes you like, you gotta just, yeah, it was a moment, it was great. Next, now I'm ready for the next one. I thought like time and that whole, the, the clock and, and memory and, and does it really exist? And I was just like, let's go head first in it. And the irony of the whole thing is, is like I had a date to get this all ready for, you know? And I, I had to have this show and I was making pieces all the way up into the end. I was still doing a piece, I'm not even lying. When we were deliver when I was loading up the truck with all the, the, the artwork, I was like, I can't, I can't stop. And, it, and you put the stuff in the gallery and there's like a sadness that goes with it because you're like, well now what do I do? Like you come home, like, I, I washed out all these bu brushes and I and I put them in the bucket and I was like they were all they were still kind of wet from just painting the show and I was like these things look so lonely right now like their job was done now what they told their story you, you need you, you need that 
you need that tomorrow. You need to know where you're painting tomorrow. You always need to know what you're doing next. And that's how, that's how I like to, to live. Like, what am, I, what am I doing right now today and what's tomorrow? Like, I'm so happy Level came through here today because I was like, what am I gonna do with this day today? And this is a big thing for me to just, uh, to, you know, to, to examine art and talk about art. And the more time you spend in front of a canvas, the more you learn about yourself. Matter of time is just what it's like to have a journal entry of my life on a wall in, a, in, in art and pieces. <laughs> cool. For sure. It's a really good answer. Yeah. <laughs>